This is Lunchtime Politics reaching you live from Channel's television's headquarters in Lagos. Hello and welcome. I am Bukola Koka. Our top stories. Hours after his indefinite suspension from office, the FCC boss, Mr. Abdurashid Bawa, is now being quizzed by the Department of State Service over his conduct. The Kano state government gives reasons for several demolitions carried out in the state. As they say, more unapproved structures causing obstruction will go down. The Inspector General of Police directs the police commissioner in Plateau State to seal up all the local government secretariats in the state following skirmishes from the suspension of local government chairman. Thank you for staying tuned and we start with this breaking news. President Bola Tsunubu has inaugurated the National Economic Council with a promise to sustain the rejuvenation of the nation's economy. Addressing members, governors of the federation, the president charged the council to join forces to support his administration towards transforming the nation and stimulating serious growth. He reminds the council of the promise made during his inaugural speech that he would focus on eight priority areas, including including security, economy, job creation, agriculture and infrastructure, among others. President Tinubu further notes that the task of growing the economy is enormous and there is no excuse for failure. The inauguration, which comes a week after he directed the Economic Council to meet to come up with the interventions to mitigate the effects of the removal of fuel subsidy. The president who subsequently inaugurated the National Economic Council, concluded by reminding the members that collaboration is not a crime. And now what appears a twist of fate. The EFCC boss, Abdul Rashid Bawa, is now cooling his heels in DSS custody following his indefinite suspension by President Bola Tinubu on Wednesday evening. In a statement released late on Wednesday, spokesperson of the Department of State Service, Mr. Peter Funaya, said Mr. Bauer was invited by the DSS and that he arrived the office shortly after. He said the suspended EFCC chairman was invited in relation to ongoing investigation over his conduct. The statement reads in part, the Department of State Services, DSS, has invited Mr. Abdurashid Bauer, the suspended chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Mr. Bawa was suspended by President Bola Tinubu indefinitely on Wednesday following weighty allegations of abuse of office. Of course, we've told you earlier that the President has suspended the Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Mr. Abdurashid Bawa, in what is described as a move to allow for proper investigation into his conduct while in office. The indefinite suspension, according to a statement from the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, follows weighty allegations of abuse of office. And consequently, Mr. Bauer has been directed to immediately hand over to the Director of Operations of the Commission to oversee affairs of the anti-graft agency pending the conclusion of investigations. Mr. Bauer's suspension comes less than a week after the President suspended the Central Bank Governor, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, over infractions and barely hours after meeting with the President at the State House. Mr. Bauer came into office following the sack of Mr. Ibrahim Magu, who was also embroiled in allegations of corruption. The youngest chairman of the EFCC since the creation of the commission, Mr. Bawa, assumed office after former president Muhammad Buhari removed the former EFCC boss, Mr. Magu, in July 2020. The suspended EFCC chair was the chief investigator for the, the alleged multi-billion Naira fraud case against former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Diazani, Alison Madweke. Between January and November 2022, the FCC said it had obtained 3,440 convictions for financial crimes and cyber crimes. Away from 
stories relating to the suspension of the EFCC boss now to others. The administration in Kano State says its main focus will be to address the issue of alleged illegal land sales during the former administration. And bearing this in mind, several structures, including a monumental Kano City roundabout, have been demolished with more expected to follow in the coming days. While the government's actions have come with mixed reactions, some individuals have taken advantage of the chaos by engaging in looting both within and outside the affected areas. Our correspondent Sadiq Ilyasu has more. The recovery of alleged illegal land sold by the Ganduja administration across Kano State is among the first assignments embarked on by the new Kano State Governor, Abba Kabir, in his first weeks in office. At the last count, seven structures, including the multimillionaire historic roundabout located close to the government house entrance, have been demolished. However, the demolition site attracts some miscreants who took an advantage and began to loot. And now to get a fuller view on the ongoing demolition in Kano State, we have joining us Mr. Musa Lawan. He is a former Attorney General of Kano State and the supervisor of the Public-Private Partnership Arrangement under the immediate past administration of Abdullahi Ganduji. Welcome, Mr. Lawan, to Lunchtime Politics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. So let's begin by asking you to tell us what exactly is happening. Give us an insight into why the new administration is demolishing most of the projects and uh, structures under the, put up under the immediate well, past government. Well, thank you very much. Uh, as to telling you why they are demolishing it, I don't think uh, I can be able to do that. But I can tell you that uh, with respect to Daula uh, Hotel, uh, we all know that it's a, it's a very old hotel, which for over 30 years has not been uh, utilized. In fact, it has uh, become like a, a den of uh, criminals. Uh, there was a time when uh, um, the last administration of uh, uh, Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso wanted to use it for as, as a hospitality uh, college, uh, but that too, because there was no accreditation, uh, it was not fully uh, utilized. So the policy of uh, the last administration, uh, headed by Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje, decided that look, uh, we cannot leave 
all these uh, government properties lying there without uh, any uh, revenue coming to the state. So uh, we invited uh, investors, reputable investors who had money to invest, and uh, we, 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 we had an agreement with them that, look, this is a land. Uh, belonging to Kano State Government, we wanted to develop it, and it was agreed that they will bring uh, uh, the funds over 10 billion naira to develop that land. That is to build an emporium, a big shopping complex, and in the middle, a three-star hotel which is to be called Dollar Boutique Hotel. And in the last uh, portion, uh, 27 plots were to be uh, uh, divided. Um, it was also agreed that the land, the value of the land, will be the equity contribution of Kano State. And uh, after having uh, a lot of discussions and agreements, it was agreed uh, that we came up with a figure that Kano State government was going to receive after the project an amount of about 2.4 billion naira. Uh, we now asked uh, the investors the hotel they were building based on the, uh, the, uh, the calculations they brought, the hotel was going to cost about 3 billion naira and the state government said look, what we want is to take over the hotel as the equity contribution of uh, Kano State, meaning that uh, Dola Hotel has been revitalized, a new modern uh, multi-billion naira uh, hotel is there for the state and it had a very big parking space, over 300 cars. If not for the corona uh, pandemic, which... Uh, uh, Mr. Lawan, permit, permit me to come in the there. Been completed uh, over a year, uh, or permit me to come in uh, there, Mr. Lawan. It was completed. If, if I may come in there. Also, but Mr. Lawan, if I may come in there. According to you, uh, the Dollar Hotel, you explained, had been lying fallow and become a den of criminals. But that is not what the yes. NNPP would have us believe. According to the state chairman, uh, the Dollar Hotel was a school uh, that had 2,000 students. And in fact, admissions were ongoing. But the Ganduje administration uh, demolished, went ahead and demolished the school and uh, allocated the, the plots divided it into 50 plots and sold it at 50, 25 plots rather and sold it at 50 million naira each and you also say that the value of the land um, according to uh, the plan of your government was to make it an equity contribution of Kano state but the former administration the current administration would have us believe that uh, they found nothing in the coffers as uh, remittances from the sale no, you see, like I, like I said, I think probably he was talking uh, out of uh, ignorance. Uh, because this was a PPP agreement. The state government did not put a single cobo and the state government was not given any amount of money. What, what happened was that part of the uh, uh, benefit the state was going to get, or one of the benefits the state was going to get, was a new three-star dollar boutique hotel. So, of course, if they check the coffers, they are not going to see anything because no money was paid to the state government. The investor was supposed to invest uh, uh, billions, over 10, about 12.8 uh, uh, billion naira into the project. And, of course, he was also going to take his profit. So, part of the, uh, the plus, the land was divided into three, and then on one part, a hotel was built for Kano State government worth over 3 billion naira, which was handed over to the state government. That is the value. That is what the state got. And with the issue of the students that he is talking about, he was saying admission was, was, was ongoing. The courses that were, were supposed to be uh, taken there did not have any accreditation. They were talking about a, a, a faculty. There was no accreditation for that faculty. And what the state government did at that time was because the uh, KUT was the one running the program, was to allocate, there is a, a big uh, 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 an institute, Kerfi Sports Institute, it was converted into a, a school and was the students, some of the students were sent there and in the tourism board we have also classrooms, the students were taken there and the admission continued so it was not as, it, it wasn't as if the students were asked to go home, there was uh, no school, no, but this project 
was done in order to revive Dollar Hotel. It's and it dollar. was revived. New hotel was built. It was there, handed over to the state. But unfortunately, when they went for the demolition, uh, miscreants entered into the hotel, packed away all the furnitures, all the electrical appliances, and vandalized the whole hotel. So for him to say that uh, they, when they check into the coffers, of course the hotel, PPP agreement is uh, arrangement sometimes is you get uh, paid in cash and sometimes you get paid in kind. Mr. And Lawan. that was what we got. Mr. Lawan, if it was a PPP arrangement and um, um, it was the investor that was investing his own funds, how long before the yes. Kano State government began to enjoy the proceeds from that partnership? And you were in charge of the PPP arrangement. Didn't you uh, tighten all loose, he uh, loose ends you know, from these uh, 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 partnerships with the private sector? Like I explained to you, the partnership was, was consummated in the year 2020. But because of the pandemic, we had, you all, you all know that for over a year, nothing was uh, going on. What the state, like I said, was to enjoy is the hotel, which about last, about a month or 30 days ago, uh, His Excellency Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduji took over the hotel. Now what remained was the running of the hotel. It is from the profits of the hotel that the state government will be getting uh, uh, the profits. Revenue will be coming in into the state coffers. So, so, so that, that was the, the essence of the whole uh, arrangement. But Mr. Lawan, it would seem like um, this is, you know, um, a, a personal battle between the former governor and uh, his former uh, boss, Alhaji Musa Kwankwesu, um, especially when you consider, you know, the exchange of words between the two individuals. Are these settling scores with this demolition? Well, um, when you look at the demolitions, first of all, uh, let me say that a governor, an executive governor, a sitting governor, has the power to allocate land, uh, just like uh, Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso did when he was the executive governor of Kano State. Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduje also had the same power when he was the governor of Kano State for eight years, which he exercised in the interest of the people of Kano State. But when you exercise that power, when it comes to the revocation, there are certain conditions you have to follow. You have to give notice. It's a, it's a, it is there in the laws. You have to give notice to those that are, you, that are there. But obviously, uh, no notice was given. And uh, if you look at the way the demolition was uh, carried out, uh, you will say that, well, this, you can call it a settlement cause. Because if you are saying there was a school there and it was, uh, uh, the, the former government now uh, disbanded the school and whatever. Why couldn't you have taken over the building? These are mighty shops which could have easily be converted into lecture halls. But if you demolish, it means then that you are reclaiming the land, meaning that you have to spend hundreds of millions to put in another structure, be it a school, a hospital, whatever it is, well, why couldn't well, Mr. they Lawan, have combated that? Yes. Mr. Lawan, there are more areas to touch. For, for example, the concern about how uh, you know, individuals are taking advantage of the situation to loot uh, from those properties. But we are totally out of time. We want to thank you very much for your time yeah. on the program. Mr. Musa Lawan is a former Attorney General of Kano State and Supervisor of the Public-Private Partnership Arrangement under the administration of uh, former Governor Abdullahi Ganduji. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now to other stories now. The Governor of Benue State, Reverend Father Heisen Alia, has taken an unpopular stand on the status of existing local government chairman prior to his assumption of office. The Governor has said that unlike other state executives, he has no plan of dissolving elected local government chairmen who are in the opposition party, but with a caution that any chairman who is incapable of holding down the peace and security of their domain should resign and allow those with capacity to step into the post. The governor who read the riot act at his first meeting with the 23 local government chairmen elected under the platform of the People's Democratic Party says he is not thinking of dissolving them 
but wants a situation where all of them can work with him to ensure peace and security in Benue State. The meeting comes after violent communal clashes in Oju local government area that resulted in the death of four persons and two others in Gwe East local government area on Wednesday. And to Taraba State, where Governor Abu Kefas has shut down a unity exchange school in the state capital, owing to dilapidated structures, inadequate teachers, and unhealthy learning environment. The governor has also directed that the exchange students program be suspended with immediate effect and has ordered the immediate return of the students to their various homes. And to Plateau State, where the Inspector General of Police, Usman al Kalibaba, has directed the sealing of all 17 local council secretariats in Plateau State, North Central Nigeria. The action, according to the IGP, is to avoid possible threats to lives and properties in the local government councils as a result of the leadership tussle following the suspension of elected chairmen and councillors by the state government. Crisis began to brew following the appointment of Transition Management Committee Chairman in spite of a court order restraining the Plateau State Government from tampering with the democratic structures at the local government level pending the hearing of a substantive suit filed by the aggrieved chairman. The police are warning all sides not to allow a breakdown of law and order by disrupting the democratic process or causing any confusion around the local government secretariats. And to the National Assembly now, where the upper and lower legislative chambers held their first plenary a day after the inauguration. And as activities kick off in earnest in the 10th session, some lawmakers in the upper chamber have been speaking on issues they will be addressing in the coming days. Meanwhile, one of the first resolutions of the Senate was to send an official message to the President, Bola Tinubu, and international parliamentary bodies, informing them that a quorum of the Senate has assembled and that presiding officers of the 10th Senate have been elected. This is the first plenary session at the upper chamber after the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly. Expectedly, the lawmakers exchange pleasantries as they await the commencement of sitting. The President of the Senate, Senator Gotsu Lapabio, his deputy, Senator Jubrin Barao, and other principal officers arrive in the chamber and make their ways to their seats. After everyone had settled in, the President of the Senate called the meeting to order and almost immediately asked the non-senators to leave the chamber so the Senate could have a closed door session. When the doors were opened again to the media, the Senate resolves to write to the President, Bola Tunubu, international parliamentary bodies and others, informing them that a tent assembly has begun in earnest. The resolution is following the motion moved by the Deputy Senate President. The President of the Senate then set up a committee to address pertinent issues of members of the Senate. I'd like to uh, set up uh, a, a, a committee to look into the welfare of the, of the members. Outside the chamber, some senators speak on issues they are looking forward to handle. We will focus on the constitution to do with the federal system, physical federalism, uh, the issue of reducing power from the federal government to the state, all of the above. We are trying to see what we can do in terms of legislation to make sure that every aspect of Kogi State, where federal presence should be, there must be legislation to compare the federal government to come in and work for us. The challenges we have about security, which is, as I usually opined, closely related to unemployment, we must begin to patronize ourselves as Nigerians in all applications. The Senate has adjourned plenary to July 4, 2023.
And more stories now. A senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Olisak Bakoba, has commended the president, Bola Tinubu, for his recent actions, which include the suspension of the CBN governor, Godwin Emefiele, and the EFCC chairman, Mr. Abdurashid Bawa, and his implementation of the policies on fuel subsidy and foreign exchange. He also urged the president to investigate the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, as he believes the 2023 general elections were not up to the required standard and both the winners and losers of the elections were victims of the poorly conducted exercise. And just before we go, Governor Ubasani of Kaduna State has emphasized the importance of collaborating and engaging traditional rulers in the management of intelligence, which is needed for tackling security challenges. He made the assertion during a meeting with traditional rulers across the state. The governor promised to upscale the level of intelligence gathering for effective crime management through the close collaboration and partnership with the traditional institution. Traditional rulers across Kaduna State converge on this hall for a meeting with the governor, Uba Sani, the first since his inauguration. The agenda of the meeting may not be too far from the efforts to tackle the peculiar security and socio-economic challenges in the state, and for that to happen, information from the royal fathers in their respective domains is vital. Amongst those present are the Emir of Zauzo and Chairman Kaduna State Council of Chiefs, Haji Nuhu Bamali, the Paramount Ruler of Atiab Chiefdom, Dominic Yahaya, the Emir of Jamaa, Muhammadu Isa. The traditional institution is critical to the success of any administration. It is closer to our people and has remained a stabilizing force at the grassroots. Our administration will effectively engage the traditional institution and involve it in its policy making and implementing. We, as an entity, an institution, we are loyal and we will continue to be loyal to the government. And we also uh, request you know, that uh, if there is anything that requires our attention on major policy you know, uh, decisions, you know, the institution will be consulted, you know, from time to time, which we believe it will uh, um, address some communication gaps. While highlighting the importance of citizens' engagement and collaboration in tackling the problems of insecurity in Kaduna State, yes. Governor Sani outlined his plans to assign specific roles to traditional rulers. Our dear state has been facing security challenges. To effectively tackle the menace of criminal elements, we must put in place effective intelligence gathering and mechanism. The traditional institution has a critical role to play in putting together a framework for intelligence gathering and interface with security agencies at the grassroots level. Over the years, there have been debate around more responsibilities to traditional rulers at both the federal and state levels. It appears the Kaduna State Governor is taking it beyond words, believing that issues bordering on insecurity cannot be effectively managed without the traditional institutions. And just before we let you go, let's remind you that President Bola Tinubu has inaugurated the National Economic Council with a promise to sustain the rejuvenation of the nation's economy. He urged members of the council to join forces to support his administration towards transforming and stimulating serious growth. And this is where we drop the anchor on lunchtime politics for today. Join us again tomorrow. I am Bukola Koka.